attitude towards business development, his sense of humor and pleasant attitude, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Ray Banji, Sales Director of Dejavins Financial. Please put your hands together to welcome. Thank you for having the opportunity for me to present today. Thank you very much for Inforce Life for doing such a great job in 2013. And thank you for my main man, Chamran, for doing a solid effort on making sure that uh, people have financial security in their life. So I have the privilege of motivating you today. What do you guys think? You guys need to be motivated? Yes. Clearly by that response. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little exercise. On this screen, there's a term. It's a Japanese term, and it's called Kaizen. What is Kaizen? Well, for those of you that want to Google it, you can. Kaizen is a Japanese term that means gradual, unending improvement. Doing little things better. Setting and achieving ever higher standards. You see, do you remember when that Toyota incident happened? Where there were some issues with that pedal to the metal? Remember that? What happened was Toyota forgot this practice of Kaizen. And what Kaizen basically means, from a human perspective, is that every year, don't we want to achieve something better? Don't we want to achieve something in our personal life, in our financial life, that's going to take us to the next level? So if that's the case, we have to have a Kaizen mentality. Now, I have a good friend that works at the Toyota plant in Cambridge. So we're going to do a little exercise, all of us. I want everyone to stand up. Please, stand up. By the way, I didn't tell you this was going to be a highly interactive session, but it is. So this is what happens. The Toyota employees that are making the Toyota cars will all line up in one row. And the supervisor, before they start making the Toyota plan, you know what they'll do? The supervisor yells, Kaizen. And guess what the employees yell back? Kaizen. Kaizen. And it goes louder and louder. All right, so let's do a few tests. Kaizen. Kaizen. Thank you. I love I, the kids were even louder, right? Kaizen. What do you guys feel? Hungry. Hungry. <laughs> Only Duke feels hungry and thirsty. He got the first drink of alcohol. So have a seat because today what we're going to do is we're going to experience a Kaizen approach to 2014. A different approach that perhaps is going to make your shift into the way that you think about perhaps your business, your family life, a little bit differently. And Duke, I promise you, we'll get 30 minutes so you can get some food, all right? So, the very first thing, I want you to take a look on the screen here. Successful people form the habits of doing the things that failing people don't like to do. So there are two roads in every street. The one street that's called success, and the one street that's called failure. So ask yourself, what do failing people don't like to do? And by the way, it is interactive, so I'm just going to go to people and ask them a simple question. What do failing people don't like to do? Risk. Say that louder. Taking risk. Taking risk. Great example. What do failing people don't like to do? Put it, uh, enough Putting enough effort. Putting enough effort. Great. What do failing people don't like to do? They don't like to work hard. Good one. What do failing people don't like to do? Oh, make cost me shit. Okay, that's a great example of what failing people don't like to do. Now, do we have any failures in the room? No. No. We have successful people in the room. So if we you are on the successful street, we're going to be taking that successful road. But the fundamental question we have to ask ourselves is, what is the definition of success? So let me take you there. And I'm going to do this in three parts. I'm going to talk about the success factors, I'm going to examine your thinking, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about leadership, okay? In three parts. So we're going to talk a little bit first about success factors. Now, the success factors, step one, define specific goals. 
What do we mean by define specific goals? How many people here have a New Year's resolution? No one? Some people? Okay, we make some New Year's resolutions in life, right? And sometimes it could be economic. Sometimes it could be financial. So I'm dying to know what some of your New Year's resolutions are. Building a company to the next level. How many people here are self-employed? Show of hands. Isn't that what you want to do? Whether your business is in real estate, whether your business is insurance, whether your business is a doctor, whether your business is a lawyer, whether your business, you want to take it to the next level, right? Over here, it's going to put your hand. Goals. What's your objective for 2014? There's a good one. Make more money. Are you happy and satisfied with the money that you earned last year? Or would you like to earn more? You would like to earn more. Okay, so that's a good one. So the very first thing when we're talking a little bit about success factors is to talk about the goals, right? Then let's get to the next step. So we make specific goals for our step. Then this is the hardest part, is having a strategic plan. Now what do I mean by having a strategic plan? It's easy to say, yeah, I want to earn more money or I want to increase my business. But the question is, how do we increase your business, right? So how many people, when you look at your business plan for 2014, you implement a strategy? For example, if you want to increase your business, you got to make a few more phone calls than you did last year, right? You got to do a little bit more networking than you did last year. So the accountability to actually implement a plan is so important. Now. Many people, I'm looking for somebody that has a personal goal, unlike financial. Does anybody have a personal goal? Go to the gym. Go to the gym. All right. I've already seen some of how you guys drink and eat. How many people here want to go to the gym or do a little bit better job on their diet? Anybody? Have you ever heard of the seafood diet? You see food and you eat it? You know that plan? No? So we all want to take that. So let's just take a look at eating better. So if my goal is I want to lose 20 pounds, what do I have to do to lose 20 pounds as part of my strategy? What do I have to do? Help me. What do I have to do? Eat better? I got to exercise? Very good. What else? Stay away from my mother-in-law's cooking? What else? Sleep better, okay? So then we're building a strategy. Then the next step is ultimately maintaining the enthusiasm to follow through. How many people believe that's the most hardest part, right? Definitely. But if we have a plan and we execute a plan with strategy, we can maintain the same enthusiasm and follow through with that. And lastly, and I find that this one is the most important, is we want to monitor. Monitor means like every month we have to check and do a balance of whether or not our goals are being met. Okay? So with these four ingredients, implement a few success factors. But we're going to explore a few common words here. All right? There was a study that was done. And the study asked, what does it take for some of the top athletes to be the most successful athletes in the entire world? And when these athletes got together, basically, these are some of the words that came up. Now, attitude. What does it mean to have a positive attitude? What does it mean to have a positive attitude? What does it mean to have a positive attitude? Think positively. Think positively. Absolutely, without a doubt. How many people wake up in the morning and say, I am, don't feel like going to work. Right? I don't want to make those calls. I just want to stay home, watch Dr. Oz, maybe I'll learn something new. Right? Well, it starts with our attitude. Our attitude is, you know what? We're going to make a little bit more of a difference in our life, in the way that we impact our family. Let's talk a little bit about um, time management. Now, I'm going to show a couple of things on time management. Every time that we look at a work day, okay, 24 hours, you figure eight hours is the sleeping time, you figure eight hours is work, and what, these days four hours is stuck in traffic? 
Is that a good use of our time? So we've got to figure things out in life a little bit more. So I want to talk a little bit about time management. Ask yourself one fundamental question. Is what I'm doing now the best use of my time? In other words, most of you who are self-employed, we look at something called RPAs, Revenue Producing Activities. Revenue producing activities are the things that we want to focus in on. Now, there are a few things that are highlighted here that we might want to consider, but I want to show you this slide coming up. Now, imagine there are five different types of people. And you look over here, you have your business, and you have the focus on internal operations, which is sort of the administration of your business. We have external marketing, which is some of the things that you want to do to promote your business. And then you have some of the internal marketing that you have to do to help support your business. And then finally, you have something called RPA, which is the revenue producing activities. Now, if you look at these clocks, I'm gonna go around the room and ask yourself, which level would you like to be at? And which level do you think is the one that fits exactly what you want to achieve? Okay, take a look. So over here, what level would you like to be at? These guys are shy, clearly. So, no, I need to take it out, take, tell me a level. Look at a level, sir. What level would you like to be at? Level E. Okay, how many people said level E? Show of hands. Right? Very good. Because that's the one where we focus. So the question is, how do we get to level E? Right? How do we get to level E where our job is solely focused more on the things that produce more revenue? What do you think the answer is? It starts with your objectives and starts with your strategy, right? Having a strategy in place. Once you build that strategy, then we focus that strategy more on revenue producing activities. Next slide, please. Now, let's examine your thinking a little bit. And let's just go to the next slide here. So, I'm gonna ask you a question. And feel free to take a pen and paper, though, because it's always a good exercise. Fast forward, move your clock five years from now. Five years from now. Ask yourself one question. What must I commit to getting done in my practice that will cause me to feel good both personally and professionally? So fast forward five years from now, what will make you feel good personally and professionally? Increase in income. Now, I would ask, by how much? 200%, so clearly you're not earning a lot. Okay, what's gonna make you, in five years time, accomplish what you want to accomplish, both personally and professionally? Personally, to get the maximum I can get to be possible. Okay, so that means you're negative? Not exactly. Okay. I'm <laughs> So I need something a little bit more specific. Joby, in five years time, where do you see yourself? Successful. Successful. What's the definition of success? Earn more money. Earn more money. So clearly this is a money table, right? <laughs> right, this is a money table. Now, here's the difference. I'm gonna ask these lovely young ladies, or somebody here that's really loud, okay? What do you want to do in five years? Too small. What do you want to do in five years? Just go to sleep. She just wants you to go to sleep. <laughs> Clearly she hasn't listened to my presentation, right? <laughs> That's okay. Five years time, where do you see yourself? What is the definition of success though? Right? You see, there's a thing in um, our human DNA, and it's called neuro-linguistic programming. If we today write down and think about 
Where do we see ourselves in five years? And actually imagine it. What happens? Does it happen in five? Or does it happen in two? Has that ever happened to you? Where you had a goal, you said, you know what? This is what I want to accomplish in five years time. This is where I want to be. And then all of a sudden, it's happening quicker. What just happened is the theory of neuro-linguistic programming. Subconsciously, we're actually programming our mind to accomplish what we want. So what I'm asking you today is, when you're driving home from this lovely party, I want you to ask your spouse one simple question. Where do I see ourselves in five years? Is it in cold Canada? Or is it in sunny Florida? Right? Is that a fair question? Is that something that you can do for homework? Right? Fair question, right? So you got some homework to do on your drive home. Next slide, please. Two sides of the brain, left and right. Which one, which side of the brain makes the buying decisions? Which side of the brain actually says, you know what, I'm going to move forward with this plan? Is it our analytical side, which is the left side of the brain? Or is it the right side of the brain, which tends to be the more creative side? Which tends to be the more side that has art to it? Which is the side that actually says, you know what, I want to make that decision. It happens to be the right side of the brain. And I'm going to give you an example. There was a study that was done, and what they did was they put the electrodes to the brain of a few people. All of a sudden, when the professor started talking about statistics, the left side of the brain stirred with activity, but the right side of the brain literally fell asleep. Has it ever happened to you? Maybe now. Okay, the idea is, is that when we're talking to people, when we're trying to accomplish our goals, are we appealing to the left or are we appealing to the right? We have to start appealing to the right. And how do we do that? We do that by thinking about stories. And I want to give you an example of a story. It's not talking a little bit about a Cinderella story. It's talking about an actual story that resonates about accomplishment. Hit the next slide. I'm going to tell this story. Next slide, please. So what you're seeing here is a famous photograph of Muhammad Ali, and it's called the Phantom Punch. Anybody here a Muhammad Ali fan? OK, awesome. This was a famous fight against Sonny Liston. And what Muhammad Ali did is he never even punched the guy. The guy fell down because he was so scared of Muhammad Ali. Because that's why it's called the Phantom Punch. But what's in this photo is actually a different story from what you see. Now I'm just going to go to this. You see Muhammad Ali telling the guy, get up, sucker, get up. That's what he's actually saying in this. But there's another side of the story. By the way, this is one of the most famous photograph for, uh, sports stories in the entire history. Take a look at this image. You see this image? What do you see? There's a whole bunch of photographers. What are they taking a shot of? Muhammad Ali's? Backstop. There was only one photographer that took a picture of the front. And that was this, this shot. This guy made over a million dollars by taking one photograph because he went there early to Madison Square Gardens. He purposely took that camera and put it on the rafters to take that shot. And he was the only guy that has the wisdom to actually think forward to say, you know what? I'm going to be behind, but I'm also going to be in front. So here's my question for you. Are you behind or are you in the front? And where do you want to be? Are you taking a picture of the back side or are you taking the picture of the front side? Where do you want to be in life? The question that I have is, if you want to be forward thinking and taking a picture of that front shot, guess what you got to do? Set your objectives, do your planning, do all the things that it's going to take to get you that million dollar shot. Now, 
There's a person in the room that I think is taking that million dollar shot, and that's Chandra. He doesn't know it yet, all right? So one day there's gonna be that phantom punch that he takes, right? Okay? So famous shot there, next slide please. So set yourself up with success. And setting yourself up with success meaning, means ultimately be there at the right time and practice and at the same time have a strategic plan. Think forward. Next slide, please. So one of the best questions that you can put your, in your repertoire, whenever you have, I don't know, you know that business meeting? with a potential client, whether they're buying a house, or whether they're in the dentist chair, or whether they're one of your patients, one of the best questions that you can ask yourself on a daily basis is, how do you feel about this? Not how did the business meeting go, but how do we truly feel about this? Because it's the feeling that taps into which side of the brain? The right side of the brain, right? And it's the right side of the brain that causes the movers and the decision makers. Now, how many people here came with husband and wife? Show of hands. I got a question for the wives. Who wears the pants in the family? In other words, I bet you anything, the females are left or right? Say it louder. Left or right? Right side of the brain. We're always making the decisions, right? Very good. Kudos to you. Give yourself a round of applause, okay? Where perhaps the men are more process, right? They're more thinking things through. Should I go to work? Should I not go to work, right? Where the wife may say, get out of the house, get to work, right? The movers and the decision makers. So moral of the story, listen to your... Very good, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, next slide, please. Okay, we're gonna do a little visual, uh, visualization technique. 70% of the learning that we actually do is in visualization. So we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise, okay? Um, I want everyone to close their eyes. I know it's a hard thing, you're in a room, people may be looking at you, but try to close your eyes. Take a deep breath, and for the next 20 seconds, I want you to count your breath. <coughs> okay, now I'm gonna ask you to do another exercise. I'm gonna ask you to do the same thing, except during the 20 seconds, I want you to think about the best place you've ever been to in your life. Could it be back home? Could it be on a beach? Could it be on that cruise? Think about the best place that you've ever been to. Now this time, I want you to think and I want you to try to count. 20 seconds, close your eyes, think about that happy place. I got a counter there, thank you. So what happened? What happened? First of all, my question is, were you more relaxed? What happened with that happy place? Did you want to stay there? Did you, did you think it was warmer than it was where you are today? Okay, what happens is the experience of visualizing is a huge thing. Never underestimate it. When life is so stressful with all the things that we have to do with our family and professional life, I oftentimes think, well, the art of visualization is appealing to what side of the brain? The left or the right? Help me, the left or the right? Is it the left? It's the right, right? It's the right, the mover, the decision maker that can often help you with your decisions on a daily basis. So we need to realize to visualize. Go ahead. So remember, left side to monitor, but it's the right side is the mover. So my theory is if we want to move ourselves forward to our plans, it's not about the analytics, it's all about the 
It's all about the help me. Mover. It's all about going to the right. Next one. So key leadership questions. I want to ask you a question. Just tell me yes or no. All right? Are you excited about what you do for a living? Okay, that didn't seem like a good response. Are you excited about what you do for a living? Yes. Okay, great. Are you optimistic about the future? Yes. Okay. You're staying busy? You're becoming effective? Are you making good on all your commitments? Uh, sort of. Sort of? Well, I'm glad that you're being honest. That's good. Could you be better at it? Yes. Sure. Great. Thanks for the honesty. Are you satisfied in what you're becoming in life? Yes. Fantastic. <coughs> These questions should be asked on a regular basis. You know when you feel stressed that one day you just had that bad day? These questions are so important as part of your DNA to ask yourself, what am I doing right? Okay? These are the leadership questions that we should ask. So, professional athletes, when they're asked, they know their strength, they know what they do good, they know why they're good. Most importantly, they're intelligent and they're working hard. Isn't this the three ingredients that we try to achieve? Right? Next slide. So today, if you can call it. Today's the beginning of a new day, isn't it? Is everybody feeling refreshed? Do we need to do Kaizen again to make sure everyone's feeling refreshed? Okay? So today's the beginning of a new day. If there is any thoughts that I can give you, it's this last couple of thoughts. There's a rule in the financial service industry, and it's called the Rule of 72. Now some people view it as a rule of compounding. I don't. What I view it as is the opportunity where if you have an idea to grow your business, if you have a plan, if you have a strategy, you have 72 hours to implement it, otherwise it's gone. Does that make sense? That's the Rule of 72. So remember, the fundamental philosophy that I always live by is no one has a lease on life or good health. What does that mean? What does that mean? Thank you, Duke. Don't think, take things for granted. It also means life is too... Remember when we were young kids, right? Wasn't it that we were young kids and the day just seemed to drag on forever? Didn't it? And then as we got older, what happened? Days got shorter, didn't it? Why? Why? Because when you were a kid, there was no such thing as time, right? Wouldn't it be great to go back sometimes and freeze frame, freeze frame some of those moments? Okay? And that's what this whole thing about 2014 is. Is take advantage of the opportunity because that time in life is too short. So with that being said, put your commitments and plans together to achieve success, put in a good strategy, monitor the results, make sure that you improve your leadership skills, and at the same time, more importantly, is to measure what matters most to you. With that being said, I want to take this opportunity to thank you.